All right, this is Unit 4, Part 4. What was going on during the latter part of the Revolution? We have the British taking back control of part of Georgia. So in 1778, the British capture Savannah. Remember, they left after the Battle of Rice, after the Battle of the Rice Boats, and now they've come back and they capture it easily. The Patriot government um, leaves; they flee into the back country. The British offer to pardon anybody who would take an oath of allegiance to the king. Not many of them do. And then a little bit later on, both Augusta, Ebenezer, and Sunbury, which was south of Savannah, are all back under British control. So that is along the Savannah River, down to Savannah, and a little ways down the coast. That still leaves, let's go back to our map, a lot of territory in the back country that was controlled by, by the Patriots. In February of 79, rebel forces led by um, Elijah Clark attack a loyalist camp at Kettle Creek, which is northeast excuse me, northwest of Augusta. Here's Augusta, here's Kettle Creek. The Patriot Militia, read, led by Elijah Clark, Andrew Pickens, and John Dooley, surround the Loyalist camp, and there's fighting, and the British are defeated. It's not a huge battle, but the British had been hoping that the people in the back country of Georgia would remain loyal to England. And this battle shows very clearly that the, the back country settlers are definitely in the Patriot camp. A month later, there's a Patriot defeat, but nonetheless, the British have learned that in the back country, the, the, the settlers are on the side of the Patriots. We'll talk a little bit more in a little bit more detail about the actual battle. We'll take a look at a map and sort of what happened and what we think about the battle strategy. We'll do that in class. So in the back country, Again, there's some fighting between, well, there's not really until 1779, there's, there aren't British troops. It's fighting between patriots and loyalists. You've learned about Nancy Hart, the only woman who has a county named after her in Georgia. And she is, is very, very well known. Now. In September of 1779, the French arrive. They are allied with the Patriots. And they arrive with 22 ships and 4,000 troops to try to liberate Savannah, to try to take Savannah back out of British control. Um, the French commander, Destang, demands Savannah surrender, but the British um, general says, oh, we will give us 24 hours, and Destang says, okay, and the British reinforce. So they begin a three-week siege. They surround, they bombard, and they try to get the British to leave Savannah that way. By the end of it, um, there is an actual battle that the Patriots lose. Huge numbers of men died. It was the second bloodiest battle of the Revolution. And it's a Patriot defeat. The British remain in control of Savannah as well as Charleston, the, the South's two main ports. We'll learn a little bit about a guy named Mordecai Sheftal, who was a Patriot leader. 
as well as watching a Georgia stories about the siege and the Battle of Savannah. So the British remain in control of Savannah for the rest of the war up until Cornwallis surrenders his entire army in Yorktown, Virginia. But after that, in May 1782, the royal governor, the royal government has to evacuate. And so in July 1781, the royal governor, his family, hundreds of loyalists have to leave. And most of the property that they own was confiscated and given to patriots. The Patriot government relocates to Savannah and begins the process of governing. We will definitely be doing a timeline as we go through this and there's also a vocabulary page that we will do. But that wraps it up for part four.